Hi guys, it's Mr. Robeson here. We are working on 7.4 today, hypothesis test for proportions. We're putting it all together. We're doing the state plan do conclude to do a full hypothesis test for a proportion. And we're gonna look at two examples here today. All right, so how do we do the whole process? This is it right here. I know there's a lot of information here, but we just, on our paper, we should just draw a big cross for each one of these problems. Just a big, Cross like that and then just try and fill in each of these sections so the first one is state we want to state what p stands for we want to state what our two hypotheses are our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis if we have any sample information like p hat we state that and we also state what our significance level is all right then we go over to our second box where we are going to plan for the test and we have to say what test we're doing the name of this test is a one sample Z test for P. All right, we need to have a random sample for this test to work. We need to check if we have a normal sampling distribution. And the way we do that are the two conditions here, N times our P naught, our null hypothesis P, and N times one minus P naught, both have to be greater than or equal to 10. And the third one, we need our independence condition, 10 times our sample size must be less than the size of our population. We'll just basically state that and move on. Then we actually do the test. We can do this on our calculator. So I know we've been doing it by hand. Here's the shortcut. It's built in on the calculator. We'll do a couple of examples. We'll show you how to do it on the calculator. And then after we do the test, we conclude based on the P value we get from the test. So we get a P value and we make this sentence basically. Since the P value equals whatever number we get right here is either less than alpha or greater than or equal to alpha. If it's less than alpha, we reject the hoe. If it's greater than alpha, we fail to reject the hoe. And then our second sentence we write is about our alternative hypothesis, whether we have evidence for it or not. So if we reject the hoe, that means we have evidence, significant evidence for the alternative hypothesis. If we fail to reject it, it means we do not have significant evidence for the alternative hypothesis. All right, so our examples. Uh, the first one here is about potatoes. So if the producer finds convincing evidence that more than 8% of the potatoes in a shipment have blemishes, the truck will be sent away to get another load of potatoes from the supplier. Otherwise, the entire truckload will be used to make potato chips. The potato chip producer has received a truckload of potatoes from the supplier. A supervisor selects a random sample of 300 potatoes from the truck. The inspector reveals that 28 of the potatoes have blemishes. Is there convincing evidence at the alpha equals 0 0.10 or 10% level that more than 8% of the potatoes in the shipment have blemishes? All right. So we're looking about, we're dealing with the percent of potatoes with blemishes. So I'm going to say that my P is the true proportion of potatoes with blemishes like with spots on them or growing little eyes on them or whatever, all right? Our null hypothesis is always equals to, so we'll start off, we'll think that we equal 8%, which is 0 0.08. Our alternative hypothesis, we want to see, is there more than 8%, all right? We said it in multiple spots here, more than 8%, so we want to see is P greater than or significantly greater than 0 0.08. We also want to write down our alpha value, 10%, 0 0.10. And we also want to write down what's the sample value we have, our p hat here. And we had 28 with blemishes out of 300. So it's 28 out of 300. All right, and there's our state box done. Next, we plan. This is a one sample, because we only took one sample of potatoes. It is a z test. Whenever we're working with proportions, it's a z test for p. So we're trying to do a test for a proportion. Our first condition was, did we have a random sample? And yep, I underlined it right here when we were going through, so random sample. Check, we've got that. Next, we need to do our N times P. So this is the P we use, our null hypothesis. Our N here is this 300. So we do 300 times 0 0.08 and 300 times one minus 0 0.08. I believe this gives us 24, and this gives us, what is that, 276. Both of those values are greater than or equal to 10, 
So that tells us we have an approximately normal sampling distribution, so we're good to go there. And our last condition, independence, 10 times our sample size, so 10 times 300 is 3,000. Hopefully there are less than 3,000 potatoes in the truck, so 3,000 should be less than all potatoes in a truckload. So check, that checks out hopefully. Now we do the test. So this is called a one prop Z test on your calculator. So let's pull up our calculator here. There it is. Turn it on and we go to stat. We go over to test and then we go to one prop Z test. Here it is, number five, one prop Z test. All right, our null hypothesis P is what we put in first. It was 0 0.08. Our X value was the 28 potatoes that had blemishes. Our N was the 300 total potatoes. And then we highlight which ones are alternative. We have greater than, so we want the one that's greater than over here, which is the last one. All right, you're not going to have the choice for a color on your calculator, and we just go straight to calculate. And then we're going to write down the Z and the P value. The first two here are the ones we want. If we want to know what the P hat was, it's right there too. It's 0 0.093. So it is a little bit bigger than 0 0.08, but it doesn't look like it's significantly bigger. So our Z is 0 0.85. And the P value, these are the two things we want to write down from here, was 0 0.197 or just 0 0.19 or 0 0.20. If you want to round up, that's fine. And now we do our conclusion. So our conclusion starts with since the p-value equals 0.197. And now we compare that to our alpha value. All right, 19 is greater than 10. So that is greater than 0.10, which was our alpha. So that means our p is not low. So we're not going to reject the hoe. So we fail to reject the hoe. We are not going to reject the null hypothesis that p is equal to 0 0.08. That means we do not have significant evidence. Have significant evidence for the alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis is that the true proportion of potatoes with blemishes is greater than 0 0.08, or you could say 8%. And there we go. All right, and that's the process. So that's a full problem. I know it's a lot of work, but let's take a look at one more example here. All right, and I've already got red background, so let's switch this to blue. All right, so according to the Centers for Disease Control and or in Prevention, or the CDC website, 68% of high school students have never smoked a cigarette. Good for them. Anna wonders whether this national result holds true for her large high school. She surveys a simple random sample of 150 students from her school. She gets responses from all 150 students. 90 say they have never smoked a cigarette. Is there convincing evidence that the CDC's claim does not hold true? at Anna's school, use alpha equals 5%. All right, so it looks like we're definitely talking about a proportion here, and we're talking about the true proportion of students who have never smoked at Anna's school. Actually, I hope that's a high school. All right, uh, null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. So our null is always that P equals something. In this case, we are given that the national level is 0.68 or 68%. So we wanna know, does this hold true? So we wanna know, does it equal 68% or does it not equal 68%? Also, another clue is we don't have the words less than, greater than, increased or decreased. So it looks like it's gonna be not equal to 0.68. The alpha we want to use is 0 0.05, and our sample data, our p hat is, we had 90 out of 150. So 90 out of 150, 
So that means this 150 down here is our n. The name of our test is a one sample z test for p. We have a random sample. It was stated. Sample check, right, right there, random sample. All right, we do our n times p, so we've got 150 times 0.68 and 150 times 1 minus 0.68. All right, I don't know what that works out to. I'm going to have to have my calculator help me out here. So let's see, we've got 150 times 0.68 gives us 102. So this is 102. That means this must be 48. Both of those are greater than or equal to 10. So we've got the normal condition checks out. Finally, independence. So our n here was 150, so we do 10 times 150 is 1,500. Hopefully there are more than 1,500 students in her school. It did say it was a large school, so that does check out. All right, we have more than 1,500 at our school, and we're kind of a middle-sized school. All right, so we're going to do a one-prop Z test on our calculator. So we pull up back my trusted friend here and let's see stat go over to test and down to number five the one prop z test we press enter our null hypothesis was that p equaled 0 0.68 68 percent our p hat was 90 out of 150 our alternative here is that it's not equal to so we choose that one and press enter and we calculate and we get z equals negative 2.1 All right, that's pretty far away, and our p-value, which is just listed as p here, but we don't already have a p, so we don't want to call it p, is 0 0.035, 0 0.035. So now we can conclude, so this p here is definitely lower than the alpha, so since our p-value equals 0 0.035 is less than 0 0.05, which is our alpha, we reject the hoe. All right, we reject that P equals 0.68, which means we have significant evidence, not just a little bit of evidence, but significant evidence that the proportion of people who smoke at Anna's school is not 68. The true proportion uh people or i guess this was people who have not never smoked people who have never smoked at anna's school is not 68 percent and there we go all right and that is it. So that, those are our two examples. Um, this is how we do our hypothesis test for proportions. All right. So hopefully that helped you with that. And I'll see you next time.